Every quarter recently, Tesla breaks the previous quarter's delivery number, meaning that hundreds of thousands of people are buying and picking up a new Tesla each quarter. What's interesting here is that while Teslas are proving themselves to be great cars, they're still quite a bit different than other vehicles. Tesla sells directly, so you can't just go to the dealership and pick one up today. Instead, you order online with a set price and you are added to a queue. There are many other aspects of a Tesla that are very different than a normal car, so today we're going to talk about seven mistakes that people often make when buying a Tesla and what you can do to ensure you make the best decisions for yourself. So let's get into it. And a special thanks to Minuendo for sponsoring this video. The first mistake people make when buying a Tesla is a very understandable one because Tesla doesn't quite explain it in the clearest way, buying full self-driving. Every single Tesla comes with Tesla's well-known, very useful autopilot system. This system includes eight cameras around the car, their full self-driving computer, as well as other sensors around the car to help it drive itself to a certain degree, and that's included stock. However, Tesla also sells a full self-driving package that you can configure when ordering for $10,000. On Tesla's website, they say that this includes navigate on autopilot, auto lane change, auto park, summon, the full self-driving computer, traffic light and stop sign control, and coming later this year, auto steer on city streets. First of all, the full self-driving computer is included in every Tesla by default. Buying this package does not add or subtract any hardware from the car itself. It is only a software update. In my opinion, as the package currently stands, it's not necessarily worth the high cost, as many of the features still feel like they are in beta and aren't super reliable. For example, this is me summoning my Model S to the other side of a parking lot. It works, but takes longer than anything ever should. Most of the time I end up running to my car as not to screw up the traffic flow in a normal parking lot. The auto steer on city streets feature has been promised for a long time, but now Tesla is actually allowing customers to request access to the beta of this feature. So that one does actually seem like it's coming very soon. And to me, that's where the true value lies. Auto lane change is my favorite feature where you just signal and it changes lanes for you, when safe. The main thing to know here is that this can be added at any time, even after delivery. The only real difference being that if you want the $10,000 package as part of your financing, you should get it at delivery. If you don't care about that, then you can pay $10,000 through the Tesla app and receive the software update within minutes. I personally purchased this package a few months after my Model Y delivery, and it has worked just the same as if I got it on day one. Additionally, Tesla offers a subscription option for this package in the Tesla app. You pay $199 per month, plus plus tax, and then you have full access to the same package. You can then cancel at any time. I personally think this is the best option for how full self-driving currently stands, since you can pay for it when you want auto lane change on road trips, cancel when you don't need it, and more. Additionally, if you sell your Tesla and upgrade to a new one, you can just resume your subscription on that new car. Even though it is strictly software, the $10,000 package purchase unfortunately stays with the vehicle. This means that when you sell, the package goes with the car, and that extra cost often doesn't actually get valued valued in its sale. That's how it stands currently, but if Tesla truly ramps up their auto steer on city streets feature, which they are putting out in beta, and can make it more and more capable as Tesla wants, the value of buying it could skyrocket in the next few years, so these things may not apply long term. In any case, that's how it works. You don't have to buy it before delivery, and you can pay $10,000 or $199 per month. Additionally, I think it's best to buy the car, experience normal autopilot included for free, which does lane keeping, and see if you really feel like you you need extra features after that. The second mistake people make when buying a Tesla is not setting up charging ahead of time. Charging at home is the best way to charge a Tesla, but a normal outlet is usually too slow for what most need. At my current home, I decided to go a simpler route and it has actually worked out great. The laundry room right next to the garage already had a dryer plug, so I bought this product that splits the dryer and EV connections to allow both to be plugged in, but only one used at a time. I plug in my Tesla when I arrive home, schedule charging for 9 p.m., which is my off-peak hours, then if I interrupt that with using Using the dryer, it switches off EV charging and turns right back to the EV as soon as the dryer finishes. This is an especially great option since other than this splitter box, there are no new cables to run and no power that I have to add to my panel. Other great options are to have a plug like a NEMA 1450 installed, and this is usually the most cost-effective option if your panel is able to support it easily. Both of these options will easily get me to the charge I need overnight. Around 8 to 12 hours of charging charges up for a day's worth of driving, and I never have to worry about 
about it. If you don't drive a lot very often, you may not even need these. For the last week or so, I've actually been getting my splitter box exchanged since something went wrong with it that isn't normal, and that has worked fine since I've been driving a lot less. I just keep charging pretty much all day since charging up to 80 or 100% will typically take over 24 hours. Overall though, this doesn't work for me and most people since as soon as I have to do a longer drive on back-to-back -back days, I know I'll end up running out sooner or later with the slow outlet. Tesla sells their wall connector for $500, and if you truly want this and have the proper electricity already in your home, it's the best home charging option. It looks the best, charges the fastest, but overall, it's rare to find someone who can't get by fine with a NEMA 1450 outlet or similar, and your Tesla includes the charger for this. You just need to buy the correct plug for the included charger, and Tesla sells those for $35 to $45. One small tip here is that charging up to 80% each day is what is most recommended for your battery to last as long as possible possible long term. 90 to 100% charges should be reserved for road trips and occasions. For me, on my fast charger, I just plug in every single night no matter what and set my charge limit to 80%. The habit makes it so that I don't really worry about it much at all, and Tesla says that a happy Tesla is a plugged in Tesla. The third mistake to avoid when buying a Tesla is buying the wrong range. Tesla sells the EVs with the most range of any company, but it's important to keep in mind that these are EPA estimates, and in the experience of most, don't align with real world range. Even though my long range Model Y gets 326 miles on a charge, I've never achieved this, and really am lucky to see about 300 miles on it. That's why it's important that you include a buffer on your purchase if you're driving distances. Tesla's standard range Model 3 includes an EPA range of 262 miles. For many, this is actually plenty and you won't need to pay the extra $10,000 for a bigger battery pack. If you have a decent home charger, your daily driving will likely never exceed 262 miles, and then you can just charge up at home for the next day, and it's far cheaper than filling up with gas. Then for a road trip, Tesla has a vast network of superchargers that has you covered in most common areas. You'll charge more frequently in a lower range vehicle, but you'll still be able to make it. So that's the argument for the cheaper, lower range vehicle and why it can work for you. However, on the other side of things, is the argument for getting the highest range possible. When you're already putting so much money into a new Tesla, it might make sense to take the plunge and go for the long range model. Tesla's long range Model 3 gets a range of 353 miles on a charge, according to the EPA, so that is a realistic usable 300 miles that you can use on a road trip or long drive. Having this extra buffer will save you time supercharging if you drive a lot of miles frequently. Also keep in mind that different wheels or buying the performance model can drop your range as well. Tesla doesn't list a lower range for the 19 inch wheels, but the Performance Model 3 takes 38 miles off of an EPA range on a Model 3. Now before we go any further, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Minuendo. Minuendo makes adjustable hearing protection or acoustic earplugs that provide high quality sound with no loss for pro musicians and live music lovers alike. Many don't know this about me, but I'm actually a professional drummer, having played and recorded with people like Michael Bublé, Seth MacFarlane, and more. Now that concerts are starting to come back, it's going to be even more important to protect your ears at rehearsals and concerts, but these earplugs are also great for racetracks, construction areas, and more. With normal earplugs, there is no control, and they end up ruining your experience by muffling the sound. Minuendo earplugs keep a flat frequency response, which is perceived as transparent, fit 99% of people with great comfort, and include a 10-year warranty. What's especially great about these is that they are fully adjustable with small switches on each earplug that allow you to adjust sound reduction from 7 to 25 dB. For me personally, that means I can have just the smallest amount of noise reduction when practicing quietly, but have as much as necessary when practicing loud. To check out Minuendo earplugs for yourself, click the link in the description below or head to minuendo.com. Speaking of wheels, that's the fourth mistake to avoid when buying a Tesla, buying the wrong wheels. When I purchased my Model Y back in March of 2020, I got one in inventory that came with the 20 inch induction wheels. These wheels look very cool, especially compared to the standard 19 inch wheels with hubcaps, but cost an additional $2,000. On top of that, since they are heavier, they likely get slightly less range, although Tesla doesn't specify this on their website. For me though, the biggest difference between the wheels comes with ride quality. I was shocked at how bumpy the ride was in the Model Y when I got it, and it uses a very similar suspension to the Model 3, which also rides bumpier than many expect. A few months ago, I wanted to try out the 19 inch wheels on my car to see if I noticed a difference, and sure enough, I noticed a huge difference. Overall, the 19 inch wheels ride much smoother than the 20 inch ones, and make the Model Y feel a lot more 
more like a car in its price range should. I still feel that it's too bumpy for a $53,000 plus crossover SUV, but those wheels made a big difference and it convinced me to always buy the smallest wheels with the biggest tire that Tesla sells. Sure, they're the stock wheels that everyone gets and they don't look quite as good, but they cost less, ride better, and typically get better range, so those practical things make the most sense for me. Even on the new Model S, the Plaid model can drop up to 48 miles by upgrading wheels, so it's important to note that this happens on all of their cars. However, if looks are your number one priority, I definitely understand buying larger wheels. The 20 inch wheels on the Model 3 and 21 inch wheels on the Model Y definitely shine. Moving on to the fifth mistake to avoid when buying a Tesla, not checking for quality issues at delivery. Unfortunately, one aspect of Tesla is that they are one of the newest car companies out there. They make their own cars, so as a result, they don't quite have the same quality control that other companies have honed in for decades. This results in vehicles being delivered in a wide range of conditions. Usually a Tesla made today comes in great condition, but sometimes they can have major issues or a few small issues, and it's really important to note all of these things at delivery and as soon as possible. For me at this point, I've bought three separate Teslas, and for each one, I've actually had a service appointment shortly after delivery to fix problems it came with. Most recently, my Model S had a dent in the front bumper, the trim adhesive was coming off and sticking to the door, the rear seats were a bit wrinkled in the stitching, the trim was a little loose in the rear, and the right mirror has an issue when folding out about half the time. Tesla is a bit unclear about their policy, saying you have 100 miles to let them know of these issues, but ultimately it's always best to do a thorough check of the car before leaving the delivery center. This ensures that they write down the issues, have it on their record, and then you can book a service appointment as needed to get them all fixed. Also, depending on where you pick up, they usually fix certain trim or paint issues before you head out with the car if you let them know. Tesla wants their delivery experience to be simple, quick, touchless, and seamless, but since their cars come with certain issues that they shouldn't come with, you shouldn't try to head out as soon as possible when you get the car. Let them know of the issues you see and have it documented. Some people even like to bring a delivery checklist to ensure that you check every part of the car, since it's hard to remember everything to check when you just scan over the car quickly or are overall just excited to pick up your car. As I always say, this is my biggest criticism of Tesla because everything is so good, but they lack in this area the most, making it kind of the customer's responsibility to catch certain obvious problems with the car. Now, the sixth mistake to avoid when buying a Tesla is not planning ahead for your EV credits. I'm constantly shocked by how many people buy a Tesla and have no idea that they actually qualify for state, local, or federal incentives. I live in California, so $1,500 now comes off the price of a Tesla at the point of sale through that, but there is still a clean vehicle rebate project that will usually get you $2,000 back as a check for buying an electric vehicle. These vary from state to state, and there is a great resource at Plugin America that will show you every possible incentive that you could get for your Tesla purchase based on your area. Keep in mind that for now, Teslas do not qualify for the federal EV tax incentive, but soon that may be changing and that may be something to plan for. These programs change, lose funding, gain funding, and change restrictions all the time, so it's important to do your research for your particular area since you could save a lot of money on your Tesla purchase, but if you don't research and apply, you'll never get anything. There's even a tax tax credit for setting up home charging, and this can easily offset the cost of your home charger. The seventh and last mistake to avoid when buying a Tesla is not planning ahead for accessories. There are some essential accessories for all Teslas like screen protectors, floor mats, and more that I highly recommend ordering right when your vehicle is confirmed for delivery or earlier depending on your preference. That way, as soon as you get the car, you can protect your interior, screen, and more. Then if you're planning to do something more intense like a paint protective film, you'll want to make that decision ahead of time, get quotes from your detail shop, and bring the car in immediately after delivery. PPF is a film that protects the paint from rock chips and the front bumper is what is affected the fastest. Even bringing in a brand new car to a detail shop after a couple of days could mean that there are already some rock chips and dings that the paint protective film is now going over. Instead, if you had brought the car in as soon as possible after delivery, that could have been prevented if that's important to you. Regarding general accessories, Tesla sells a variety of accessories on their online shop, but in my opinion, I actually prefer third-party accessories here. Tesla sells these but doesn't focus on them, whereas these third-party companies companies make it their entire business to sell the best optimized accessories for your Tesla. I have a full detailed video breaking down the best Tesla accessories for the Model 3 and Y, and that's linked in the description below, but I've tried a lot of accessories and those have been my favorite. As you can tell, it's extremely exciting to buy a Tesla, but there are definitely some things to keep in mind when buying or acquainting yourself with the new car. As a quick review, number one, full self-driving can be added anytime after delivery and you can subscribe for $199 per month instead of a full $10,000 
colors if you prefer that. I typically find that autopilot does more than enough for the average buyer, so I would wait to buy FSD until after delivery. Number two, plan your home charging ahead of time to make it as easy and seamless as possible. Number three, buy the range you need, keeping in mind that real world range is lower than the EPA estimated range. Number four, buy the wheels that make the most sense for you, even if they're the stock wheels because they typically include better ride quality. Number five, do a thorough inspection before taking delivery so everything can be properly fixed by Tesla if there aren't any issues. Number six, do your research on EV incentives because you may be able to get money back. And number seven, plan ahead for accessories and any sort of paint protection you may be wanting so you can protect your car from day one. I hope this was helpful if you're looking into a Tesla, buying one soon, or even already an owner. I've learned some of these things the hard way, so I hope that this will save you some time, effort, and money. In the meantime, if you want to see the best accessories for the Model Y and 3, as I mentioned earlier, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.